What's up, everybody? It's Danny, a.k.a. Ara from The Cave. I guess it's my turn to, you know, answer these questions. So let's let's get them started. In the meantime, yeah, I haven't been on here much, but got a lot of stuff working. But don't worry, I'm, I'm sticking around. I'm going to still co-host some pods here and there. All right. So what's one thing about you that would surprise most people? Um, I'm a pretty personable person. I could, I guess I could talk to anybody about anything. Um, although sometimes I could, I could come off a little timid, but once, once I'm out there, I'm pretty out there. Um, you know, not, not, not to say I'm, I'm not a people person, not at all, but, uh, definitely, you know, could relate and find common ground with, Almost anybody I meet uh, and just tell stories because I'm, I'm full of stories. <laughs> if you get to know me, yeah, tons of them. Um, yeah, we have. Anyway, so what's another, I guess another thing that would surprise most people. Um, let's see. Okay. What's a typical day in your life look like? Are there any routines, habits you swear by? Um, shoot, well, lately life's been crazy. So, uh, but I guess prior to that, typical day, uh, wake up, um, depends if I felt like going to the gym in the afternoon or in the morning or the afternoon. So if I wanted to do morning, then I wake up, uh, probably chill for a little bit in the house, kind of. Get, get the mind ready and then go to the gym, come back, uh, get ready for the day, go out to work, uh, come back and just kind of unwind from there, you know, uh, make dinner. Uh, just a typical day. Um, routines. Uh, I got, I need my, I need my gym. Uh, it's not, I mean, not only for the physical health, but it's more for my mental health. Uh, so, yeah, I don't want to get too into a rabbit hole, but definitely uh, need, need to lift weights. That's one way for me to de-stress for the day and sometimes get that rage out, you know. <clears throat> what hobbies or activities do you indulge in your downtime? Uh, I mean, I'll hang out with with you know, Teresi here and there. Uh, but what else? I, I play Fortnite. <laughs> I still suck, um, but I, I enjoy playing it. Um, I'm going to have somewhat little free time during work, so I'm going to try to pick up reading again. Uh, that's something I lost. Uh, what else? Um, I guess, you know, other times would work on my car, you know, do do that kind of work, do oil change, tire rotations, uh, change, you know, typical car work, uh, maintenance. So I enjoy doing that. That's one way for, for me to distress as well. Um, I kind of like doing that handy kind of work. <laughs> it's, yeah, um, something around the house, a, a project or some sort, I'm, I'm down with that. Um, what else? I just go, you know, the typical going out, you know, try, I try new food. I'm, a, I love eating definitely. So I like trying new places. Same with, um, you know, checking out new spots. Um, uh, so I'll, I, I'll be able to do that more often now. So I'm going to be able to scope out new cities and areas or around around the world, I guess you can say. Uh, what else? And talk talk shit, of course. Is there a particular book, movie, or song that has left a significant impact on you? Um, <clears throat> yeah, a little bit of ever, all of them. Uh, movie, uh, it's hard for me to say movies because, uh, how can I say, like when people ask me, well, what's your favorite movie? I can't. I can't answer that. I'm, I'm not too sure how to answer that because there's so many great movies. But a particular book that left an impact on me, 
Um, there was one, there's two, there's two that my previous mentor had me read. One was called the, I believe the compound, compound effect. It's just about how we could compound our lives, you know, just by doing 1% better each day, how much that could compound into it within a year. Um, things like that. It's also, there was another book he had me read called The Go-Giver about just being out there and serving people. Um, just trying to be out there and helping helping others out. Okay, The Go-Giver. It's more of a financial kind of book, but uh, very good for entrepreneurs. Um, those kind of, you know, if you're trying to get going and trying to find purpose in what you're doing, that's a good, that's a good book to read. Um, song a lot of songs that's all i'm gonna say um that left an impact yeah it's just way too many i'm a metal head in case uh any of you didn't know uh, most of the crew knows but yeah uh definitely into into different kinds of music but that's another rabbit hole maybe an under about me if you could have dinner with any three individuals living deceased, who would they be and why? Great question. Um, I've heard this question before, but I've never thought about it for myself. Um, you know, I want, there's one thing I'm curious about is my ancestors, because honestly, I don't know anything far. I don't know anything past my uh great grandmother i didn't meet my great grandmother because she had passed away but i i would like to meet someone before her who i don't know you know great 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 times 100 you know should i even go that far back but no like so i, I would have dinner with some one of my ancestors but like from a long time ago because i want to see where where all that's from not spain but i'm talking like more of the central american and where were where was that before the you know, um, what else? Who else? Um, shoot, man. I, I'm going to get stuck thinking about this one. I could have dinner. <sighs> you know, uh, maybe not. It's not an individual, but you could just say God. <laughs> <laughs> I have a lot of questions. Um, a lot of questions. And yeah, that's a big thing for me to say in case if you know if you know me, you know like damn, he said that. Okay. So you could say those two individuals because I can't think anymore. What's the most pivotal moment in your life that has shaped who you are today? <sighs> damn. So many, so many ups and downs in my life, in my life, seriously, uh, whether, you know, careers, because I was, uh, I was in a drought <laughs> recently, um, careers, you know, you learn from them, you learn how to be a better person in your career or just, you know, as a person out there in the career world, um, who else? Family. Uh, you know, there's moments where or arguments you have with family. And, and then there's times where you, re, you know, rekindle that relationship and just teaches you like, yo, you keep your loved ones close. Um, family, thick or thin, you got to just learn to talk it out. Uh, relationships, obviously. I mean, that's just a given, but like, yeah, just just learned a lot, and I think out of those three, and probably more in life, uh, it's who shaped me. You know, it's made me, along with the people that have come into yeah, people have come into my life, friends, uh, you know, the cave crew, uh, my men, my previous mentor, and just every everyone. I wouldn't say everyone that I've met in my life, but a lot of people that I've met, you know, I've, I've taken something from them. And so um, you just got to continue to learn and grow. Uh, like, you know, any moment could be a pivotal moment if you really think about it. 
Uh, so just be the best you can be every day. Be that 1% better because you don't know how it's going to be. How did you first become involved with Cave? Uh, Jerizi asked me. <laughs> he kept pushing me and pushing me in. So I caved in. Ah. Or I fell into the cave. Ah. Yeah. Um, uh, and then so, you know, I, I, w I was curious, too, to see what he was up to. And so because I had talked some shit on it, no lie. I don't want to say I was a doubter, but I, I guess I was like, I don't know. I, you know, it was more of an I don't know, but I, I wasn't really doubting it because I, I know Jersey comes through sometimes. Not all the time, sometimes. <laughs> uh, nah, you're a homie, bro. But um, let's see. And then just, just getting something involved with friends. Uh, kind of get... I'm not huge on social media, to be honest, but um, I kind of did want to throw myself out there a little bit more. Who is your favorite guest on Cave and Why? Oh, shoot, man. I liked several, and I, and I never thought about this question either because kind of like how I said about the pivotal moments, like – all of our guests have brought something great that we can take from. And I don't want to sound so generic. And like, I haven't seen the other Q and A's from the, the other cave crew. So it's like, I don't know if they, this is something everyone has said, but anyways, no, nah, like Craig, Craig Von Jelly, uh, he brought, you know, talking about that mindset, um, you know, men meet, need momentum kind of thing. Um, who else? Mateo, Hydrogen Warrior, you know, talking about holistic healing. Uh, got to learn about, you know, about him, his entrepreneurship. Um, you know, there and there's others. There's, I mean, every everyone, Juan, obviously, because we talk, <laughs> we, we would just get on there and talk shit. But, like, you know, we'd bounce ideas. So that was dope. Um forgot his name honestly but the our guest where he we were talking about public speaking it was great because i attended one of his free seminars and so even there we did exercises and got to improve on our um got to improve on our speech i mean i haven't improved much from the beginning but eh, it's it's getting there I, I could be more natural um who else um yeah it's just they, they've all been, they've all been great so but yeah that's all so if you want to be our guests and maybe become one of our favorites feel free to reach out so we could have you on as a guest are there any episodes of cave that you wish you could redo or revisit nah because you, when you're in the moment, you're speaking your mind. And when you s let it out, like, yeah, sometimes you want to take it back. But in our podcast, I, there's nothing I want to take back. There's nothing I want to redo. I I feel pretty confident, even though I, I may have been pretty stupid sometimes. <laughs> but it's all right. You know, like I said, I was in the moment. It's how I was feeling. It's how I just let it out and talked and um. Yeah, it was good. It was good. Um, redo a revisit? No, 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 re no revisiting either. Are there some that I want to make? I mean, let's bring on a, a cool guest. Who I don't know. That's someone that could bring um, value. Weed or alcohol? Obviously. Um, Obviously weed, but I I don't I don't mind enjoying some some alki either. Uh, lately, I've been having this indigo gin. It's really good. I believe it's called Emperor. If I if I'm not mistaken, really good to make some uh, gin and tonics or Tom Collins. So good stuff. 
How did you first get introduced to the world of fitness and the gym? <laughs> well, first, uh, football um, uh, in high school. So we did we did plenty of weightlifting and in football. Um, it was one of the expectations to to either work out or you don't play varsity. Um, and we had zero zero period lifting, so that means we started lifting at. 6 a.m. and go to first period at 7:45. <laughs> yeah, the good old days. And then, uh, then after high school, I took time off. Um, I gained a lot of weight, honestly. Yeah, I was not proud of that. And then, and then I started eating eating better. I mean, and that helped. I dropped I dropped weight, but it, it, I needed that extra edge. And then, um, just like just like a lot of people, and <laughs> the tough uh, tough breakup got me into the gym to not have that depression, I guess. <laughs> and and then that's when I got hooked, and that's what got it going because that's when I saw results. I lost like fifty pounds in six to seven months, and I gained tons of muscle. Oh yeah, I was going five days a week, um, and I saw, and I still do it. But I've been, I've been going, I've been going five days, four to five days, um, for for a month, and that was even the whole. I was gone for an entire month, and I was still working out over there. So, yay me! You know, it may not look like it, but I'm packing some guns. Y'all see. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Yeah. <laughs> um, but as I, as I go on, like I said, it's, it's for my mental health. Um, yeah, like, it's cool to, like, get, gain muscle. And, but it, it does make me feel better, too, like, physically. Because I don't, I don't like that feeling of, yeah, yeah, a little heavier. How do you define success? Do you feel... And do you feel you've achieved it? Success, everyone has a definition of their own success. To many people, their success could be just getting out of the getting out of here and living off the grid. To others, obviously, it's financial freedom to just do whatever you want. To others, is um, you know, to just keep have that stable job, you know, just be a regular person and make you know you know you're not rich but you know you're living comfortably um you know you're getting by so and to uh, some people that's you know that's success for them um have i achieved it i was on i'll be honest i was on a oh shoot my battery's gonna die soon i was on a verge i was on a good um uphill but covid happened and stupid decisions on my end uh, caused for that for not to continue and then uh, took some risks too but you know life's a risk you, you got to take them so that's fine uh i gotta get this hooked up or else it's not gonna it's gonna die like right now i was not expecting this to be this long <laughs> All right. Wait. No. Yeah. Okay. Um. But yeah. But. I th I think recent there's some good recent success ha happening, and I'm on that uphill now again. So just got to keep my head down though, and and you know get get to work. Um, can you share a personal challenge you faced and how you overcame it? Um, shit. 
<laughs> a lot of challenge. I mean, every day, these, since 2020, almost every day has been a challenge for me, not going to lie. Uh, like I was saying previously, you know, that's where my down downhill slide was happening, and it, that's where it commenced. And so um, it was, yeah, it was a challenge. Uh, I kept trying. Like I said, I took risks. The risks didn't pay off. Um, just kept trying to find ways. Things, you know, things didn't work out at other, let's say, other companies I worked for, worked for. Um, plenty of interviews and it was tough. It was tough. Um, but you just got to keep at it. Unfortunately, you know, I took a, I took a break off of all that for a good minute, but you got to keep at it because, um, if you, if you give up then that's just, it's done. So whatever you're trying to accomplish, you just got to keep going. Um, and so, man, my challenge was getting back on my feet and just, um, I wouldn't say I'm up on my feet yet, but I'm definitely like one knee up. <laughs> what's your biggest aspiration in life and what steps have you taken? Are you taking towards it? Um, I, this has changed over time, honestly. Um, I think I think as a growing man, I'm still growing and learning every day, but my biggest aspiration in life is just to have peace and to be happy. And what's my definition of happiness? Just being around being around those that I love cuz the older you get to you the more you start valuing companionship. Um, and just being around those that I love, the ones that love me, family, friends. Um, you know, uh, obviously it'd be cool to, you know, have some dough in the bank. You know, we need some money in the bank. <laughs> Living in the matrix. That's just what, that's what, that's what you got to do. You know, um, we're living it, but we know what the hell's going on, but you know, you just got to make the best out of it. That's how I see it. Yeah. It sucks, but what are you going to do? Fight the system. You can't fight the system, but don't go at it alone. You, 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 you'll need a good crew for that. But anyways, uh, damn, starting to go down that. What's your biggest, and what steps have I taken towards it? Just growing and being a better person that way. Those those relationships don't get tarnished. It's that simple. What's the most memorable moment you've had with Cave or episode? You know what I really like? It's not really memorable, but what I really like, I like our little little Fortnite videos. That's pretty cool. When we get dubs. Because you just hear us talking shit in the back. That's pretty cool. Um, but memorable moment. Oh, no. No, I got it. And and Jerezy. Jerezy's probably producing. He's in the back. He's like, I know what he's going to say. It was the J2. Uh, when we went to go see J2 at, uh, at his wrestling event uh, back in December. December of 2022, in case well, you're watching this, whenever you are. Uh, that was pretty dope because we went we went as the cave crew. We were all repping, of course. Um, and we got to see J2 do his thing out there. And it, it was fun. Uh, just go, go out there, talk some shit, have some hot chocolate because it was freezing. What else? It, yeah, it was just dope. It was good times, you know. Again, just building those relationships with friends and um, new people because it's good. It's it's good to uh, have good people around you. Are there any specific exercises or equipment you swear by and recommend to others? Um, it's all on what you want to do. 
Um, I will say you need to lift. I mean, that's the kind of exercise we're, we're talking about here. Um, no matter what you are trying to do, whether you're trying to gain muscle, obviously you want to lift. Get stronger, you want to lift. Even if you're just trying to lose weight, you need a lift. Um, girls, if you're listening, that too, because it's not going to make – that's a m- misconception that um, – that everyone has for girls is like they lift a lot. They'll get bulky. And it's, I mean, it depends on how much you're lifting, but no, for the most part, you don't bulk up. And so it's, um, yeah, I would say just everybody lift, lift, lift. And and it's going to help burn those calories much faster. Trust. It's going to help. Specific exercises though, what I would say when it comes to lifting is compounds, Focus on focus on compounds and not too much isolation. That's just how I do things, and um, it's kind of how I was taught too. And just uh, focus on compounds: bench press, squats, deadlifts. If you want to get uh, power cleans, if you're that crazy about it, um, bent over rows, military presses, things like that. Those are exercises that work more than one muscle group, and it's for good function. And actually, if you get strong with those, your isolation movements will get much. It'll help with your isolation or however people call it, isolation, auxiliary, accessory lifts, whatever you want to call them. Um, And that's what I do. Um, I, I do strength training, so I just I do five by fives. In compounds, but when it comes to um, isolations, auxiliary lifts, uh, I do four by tens, or and depending on the exercise, four twelves. Do you have any gym pet peeves or things that you wish people wouldn't do? Don't lift in front of the mirror, please. People are trying. People are walking by. Uh, people may want to get the the weight off the rack that you're standing in front of. They don't know if you're using that weight. I, that actually happened to me today. So that's why it was very instantaneous. <laughs> uh, we kind of got into it a little bit, no lie. But and he kind of gave me a dead look. But I'm like, bro, like, I'm cool here. Like, I, I'm just, I don't know what the hell you're doing. Like, you could, anyways. But, um, yeah, don't, don't, don't work out in front of the mirror. Um, like right in front of it, like where the dumbbell rack is, if you know what I'm talking about. Yes, don't do that. No curling in the squat rack. Re-rack your weights. I'm one of those, like, yo, like, if I ran a gym and I saw a motherfucker fucking put some the weight in the wrong section, like, nah, you're out of here. <laughs> I'm like that because because then it becomes a hassle to find it, especially if you just grab one and you put it somewhere else. It's like, Nah, man. Uh, favorite weed strain, Slazy. Uh, Super lemon hazy. Yeah. So I'm sure I'm sure you've heard that story uh, from Jerizi, but if not, we'll, we'll tell we'll talk about it. Trippiest movie to high to watch high. It was. I don't know. I don't know, but I like listening to a lot of uh, progressive metal or gent um, when I'm when I first started getting like faded back in the early days. Um, yeah, but movie, oh, I'm sure there's it's getting there. It's getting there. No, I, I can't. I can't think of any dream guest for the cave podcast. You know, someone, I mean, some, a musician from a band I like. Which one? I don't know. They dope to have a vocalist of some sort. I don't know. I don't know. But yeah, I'd be. I'd be like a little fan fanboy. Ah. Um, who else? Oh, how do you de- personally define spirituality and what does it mean with you to you? 
spirituality is it's finding a connection with with your faith and whether it doesn't matter what that faith is um you know you could have faith in god you could have faith in being you could have faith with one <laughs> um or just with the universe, however you however you want to see it, um, and it's just finding that connection and trying to. What that does is it takes you, you know, you start, you really start thinking differently. Uh, you feel much better as a person, but I would just say, just be careful what you um, what you dwell into, you know, because there's a lot of things that seem like are good but in reality behind the behind the veil it's it's not what it seems um but it's also spirituality had to you know helped you grow help me learn about the yin and yang of things you know there's always a balance of life thoughts on psychedelics um depends on how can i say it's it's not for everybody, but it's something something you could try. Um, go into it with with intention. I would tell those people, don't just no. We're gonna have fun because you're not gonna have fun. I I think now you could. I'm like I'm, I could be wrong with that, but um, I think psychedelics just take you helps you see. Uh, the unseen in this world. And uh, it's something that, like I said, if you're going with intention, I think you'll get more out of it than if you're just had a party and took some just because you thought it'd be fun. Um, that's something, you know, if you want to talk about spirituality too, like it's a tool that's used when um, to connect with whoever you're trying to connect. Best munchies when faded. <sighs> Everything. <laughs> uh, that's simple. Um, but no, I like... I mean, we're talking snacks. I like ice cream. Ice cream when you're high. We're talking food. <sighs> to me, nothing beats a good hamburger, honestly. in and out um or or I or if I make the burgers yeah I make I make some pretty bum burgers um if we're talking healthy <laughs> um I guess you could say like like I mean the bread doesn't help but a bomb sandwich like freshly made with love that you took your time on making like putting the spread on there yeah favorite band <laughs> in case y'all didn't know i even have a tattoo of them dgd death gavin dance um in case you oh well, why find a lot of relate I, I i could relate a lot to their music uh their earlier stuff their new stuff's kind of more poppier but it's pretty it's still pretty cool i like it um uh, but yeah, uh, stuff you could totally relate to. Um, you know, whatever mood you're going through, whatever event in life you're going through, there's there's a DGD song for it. Um, there's also, I mean, I like, the, like I'll say, wow, Lorna Shore, which is total opposite of Dance Gavin Dance, but they're fucking brutal, and I love them. They're dope. Uh, do you believe in life after death or the concept of reincarnation? I believe that you are stuck in reincarnation until you could get out of the cycle. Um, <laughs> yeah. So in case you're not wondering, in case you're wondering what the fuck. So we're stuck in a cycle of life where after death we can come back, but that's because we haven't found our way into the life after death. That's why it's our, it's like our spirit keeps wanting to find life, but in the physical realm, 
but until we are able to separate ourselves from ego, I guess you could say, or from self, um, you know, from the body, then, you know, then you could go in life after death. And I don't know how that is, you know, whether you call it heaven or you're just floating in space. If you're hearing my neighbors, I'm sorry. Um, so it's, yeah, but, but you could also reincarnate because maybe you, whatever you were sent on earth to do, you still haven't completed it. Or if you want to, if you see things like that, or, um, or maybe you just haven't learned how to let go. You know, they, they say that when you die, you'll, you'll see like two passages and one of them contains your loved ones. And obviously you want to reconnect with them. But if you reconnect with them, that's when you fall back into the cycle. And so again, it, that explains that you just don't want to leave the body. You know, you're stuck here. And until you're able to let go. And, you, you know, even Buddhism talks about letting go. Um, yeah, that's when you're able to, you know, you're free. Um, but if I could reincarnate, I, I like to be a dog in the U S cause fuck they're treated so good and they don't do shit. Heaven and hell is real. Um, that's tough. Cause it's my, my faith is, is slowly coming back, but I, the idea of having heaven and hell, I, I don't know. I mean, heaven in a way, yes, but not like, I mean, if the Bible describes it like that, but I don't know, it's just, to me, it's hard to think of it as, you know, streets of gold and diamonds and all this stuff, you know, and then hell. I mean, we could be living in hell right now, you know, it's hell on earth. This is tough, but then again, this is, this is what we're we got to go through and i think that's what it makes for spirit to either be free and move on or hey we like we like living in the flesh we like living you know getting the that satisfaction and we just keep coming back and coming back hey let's see and are there any spiritual teachers, books, or philosophy, philosophies that have significantly influenced your beliefs? Um, one of them was the power of now. Just teaches you to live in the moment, really, because if you worry, the you know, the past is a thought. Or I forgot what how he says it, honestly. Um, but it's just just talks about yeah um living in now and how we're the only species of animals i guess you could say on earth that thinks about time and time frame if you think about other animals like yeah like night and day they think of night and day because of um uh, you know sleeping but they're not concerned what time it is or it's only us and so i think yeah, I think what he says is yesterday is in the past, tomorrow is an illusion, but the now, yeah, like live in the now. What else? Spiritual teachers? No, I, I never had a spiritual teacher. I mean, other than my youth pastors, I guess you could say. What's been your favorite match or storyline in AEW so far? Uh huh. You know, right now I really like the. Uh, gonna sound like lame out because everyone loves it but the cole and mjf story it's pretty though i i really see mjf turning on cole but i hope there's a twist because everyone that's what everyone's expecting so i hope there's some kind of twist instead of that maybe maybe uh mjf turns turns face that's a thought or maybe even cole turns on mjf you know with him and Roderick. So it's limitless if you think about it. Um, what other, what other match? 
you know, I've seen a lot of good matches, you could say. They're all great. Um, not all, but they, there's been good ones. So the the anarchy, anarchy in the arena, even though Double or Nothing was, I don't know, it was kind of lame. For the most part, some some matches were bomb, but that anarchy in the arena, I I loved it. I don't know, it was total anarchy, like they wanted to do because um they had the music and everyone was everywhere and um yeah it was it was pretty pretty badass. Um, AEW has introduced various factions and groups. Which one do you think has the most potential and why? Well, right now the push is. Um, Blackpool Combat and the Elite, obviously. It's like the top two. Um, so obviously they I think they have right now the most potential, but that's right now. But for like long term potential. Um shoot, I don't know. I never thought of this either. Um I mean, more uh, like the singles, but I don't know. We're talking factions and groups, so no. Oh, you know what? Like, I'll say back, like, over a year ago, the Hardys should have gotten their push. Um, but unfortunately, you know, uh, the incident happened with, with Jeff, and they never got the title. But I believe that, that I think it was a double or nothing. They had, it was set up a three way. Where it was Hardy's Sting and Darby and fuck who were the champions? I think it was at the time uh, Jurassic Express. I think I forgot or the Elite, one or the other. I don't know, but that was the match they were supposed to win on. Um, but they they could come back. Um, JAS is splitting up. <laughs> yeah, so I think so. Are there any indie wrestlers you'd love to see sign with AEW? Well, obviously, J2, if he's down with it. Um, and have him get in the ring with Luchasaurus. Yeah, he loves him so much. <laughs> he loves working with him, I've heard. Nah, but other than that, I don't, know, I don't know too many indie wrestlers, so I can't say. Uh, yeah. Which conspiracy theory first piked your interest? Or picked, piked your interest and led you down the rabbit hole. Um, you know, I've, I wouldn't say a conspiracy theorist that got me going. I've always been an anti-authority kind of kid. And it happened because when I was a kid, I listened to a lot of punk rock. And punk was uh, punk was against the government. Now it's like, oh, it's punk, punk soft now. Anyways, that's another conversation, but um, it always talked bad, and so I think that kind of sparked it. It would put something in my head where it's like, don't trust the government. Uh, you know, they're after you. You know, they only want your so. You know, you're only a social security number, um, or like fighting the wars. You know, so things like that, and how how times have changed really. Um, but after that, after that, obviously the 9-11, and this was after high school, okay, like, yes, I still was anti-government and all that. But, like, then I heard about 9-11, and I'm like, wait, what? Because this whole time I really thought of terrorists. You know, I was a kid. What the fuck did I know? And, yeah, then that got started, then New World Order, um, which, you know, I've seen shit happen still. Um, what else? I mean, obviously there's the JFK, the big one, the JFK. Yeah. So there's, there's a ton. How do you differentiate a plausible conspiracy theory and one that's too far fetched? I mean, you just gotta be like, yo, what the fuck? <laughs> I think usually that's what happens with me where I read one. I'm like, there's no way. And, you know, I'll, I'll tell, I'll go into it. I'll do my own little research and see what sources, um, what other, what others have been saying about it. Um, if there's a, any actual evidence and links between what's being said and, you know, 
who and who they're talking about or what they're talking about, you know. So, um, so I mean, almost any nowadays, almost anything can be true, but I think it's up to you to just look into it more and figure it out and see if it's legit. Best documentary you've ever seen. <laughs> so many good ones. You know, I that's like asking me what what's your favorite movie? That's what I'm saying. Like I can't answer that. Um, but obviously I like a lot of the alien documentaries saw back in the day. Um, there were some also New World Order document. I don't remember the names because these were this was when Netflix first started and Netflix was like crazy. They would just put stuff out and yeah. So yeah, there's there's just too much. But I'll say uh, there's also some music ones that I like and art. Yeah. Which conspiracy theory, if proven true, would have the most significant and impact or perception or reality history or reality all of them but <laughs> i would say the most recent one i'm not gonna talk about it so much because we all know what what was recent but <sighs> they, they fooled us oh my, my my camera glitched when they said that but no they they fooled us and um It sucks because we're we're in an age of information where and technology where the whole world is seriously in the palm of our hands. Obviously not there physically, but the whole world is there. And so um you know, all it took was actually getting just questioning things instead of just nodding our heads and saying, Yeah, like whatever happened to that, you know, where we actually ask before we obey or, you know, we ask for, forg I'm not ask for forgiveness instead of permission and just rebel. But, um, I think, I think if we look more into what happened in 2020, along with the, um, the medication that was given to us about it. And yeah, it's, it's, pretty serious and there's more there's more information coming out I want to say daily but on the regular where it's starting to you know we looked so stupid back in 2020 and like Ooh, but now it's turning out to be true and so now who's the one saying oh you're so stupid Ooh. yeah it's us so Again, don't be don't be afraid to question. Have you ever had a personal UFO or extraterrestrial sighting or experience? Yes, I have. Um, it's how it's only happened at the beach, honestly, because that's when you can see shit because it's dark. But multiple times at the same beach, I'm not gonna say which beach, but it's here in Southern California, where we'd go with friends and. Um, just lay on the sand, chill, you know, look at the stars. And yeah, that's when I would see lights. Like I remember just going, choo, choo, choo. I mean, I don't know if it was exactly these directions, but you get the idea. Just like, choo, 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 choo. and it just, choo, or let me go this way. Choo, and disappeared. Um, that was freaky. Another time we were actually, um, we were leaving the beach and I saw a bright light and just go like it just went and then it disappeared again. So that was crazy. If aliens were to make contact, how do you think humanity would react? Um, go out and buy toilet paper. I mean, we saw how stupid that was. <laughs> yeah. We would do something stupid like that. Maybe not like that, but we would do something stupid. Um, oh, and you, you know how that started? It was just because one guy 
It was one person that started stacking up on toilet paper and everyone followed through with it. It's what it does, power of influence. What's your opinion on different types of aliens reported by abductees or witnesses like the greys or reptilians? I tell you, this motherfucker ain't real. Um, they're out there. That's all I could say. Um, I haven't seen them. There's people that have seen them. Um, they probably had different purposes here. Have they met each other? Ask yourself that, you know, because I'm sure greys, reptilians, they're two different types. But what if they, you know, they're like, oh, you know, hey, you should come to dinner. Here. Come to dinner at Planet Xur. Okay. You know, and they go to Planet Xur and they, you know, the reptilians cooked up the gray, some bomb ass dinner. Who knows what? Some plasma shit. I'm not sure, but um, yeah, it'd be crazy if they they found out about each other too. But you know, I, I just can't wait to actually see like the way they show it on the news or the TV or whatever. Like it, you know, see it see an alien body if you could send one message to an extraterrestrial civilization what would it be take me with you Let's get me the fuck out of here no, i'm kidding am i but um let's see no that, that'd be one number two is show us your ways you know how if they have the patience or even that intention to come and teach us like Supposedly they're peaceful. Let's say they're a peaceful race or species or whatever. Uh, come to teach us your ways. Come teach us, uh, you know, that intelligence of how you were able to get all that technology. You know, what if it's just programming? They just kind of like hook you up like in the matrix. Like, just, and you're like, oh, now I know all the martial arts from around the world. Oh, how do you handle differences in opinions among co-hosts co -hosts during an episode? You just gotta like let hear them out. Um, they could have they could have a a point that you haven't heard or um, something new. But I mean, it's, yeah, it's that's it's, it's part of conversation. I mean, we've talked about it uh, in the episode with uh, Paranoid Radio. Mr. Mr. Troubles, where you just just keep an open mind and talk and converse. How do you envision the future of Cave? Are there any exciting plans or changes on the horizon? You know, Cave Cave's doing well. Um, we we have our we have our core people. And we just want to continue to grow that core people. Yeah, exciting plans or changes? Um, I hope I could just be on as much as I can because gonna be difficult <laughs> uh, but um it'd be pretty cool to still stick around and, and help out in in some ways and yeah exciting plans let's see what let's see what they bring jerizi you tell us what are the exciting plans huh what has been what has been the most controversial or debated topic you've tackled on the podcast so far Well, controversial. I'll say we did have one one podcast with with uh, Christina. <laughs> Super controversial. We got taken down right away. I mean, it is what it is, but yeah, we spoke some truth there. Um, it was very good. I'd love to bring her back. That'd be dope. So, Christina, if you're listening, come back. Um, yeah. Which political figure, past or present, do you most? I don't admire any political figure. I support. I support a political figure, but I will never admire a political figure. That's not no never. Um, 
I mean, the best I could say would be the founding fathers. But that's because they, they had they had colonies and were able to get shit going unlike people now. Is the earth flat? It's not. That's it. <laughs> um yeah, if you can go back in time, when would you go? Honestly, I want to see dinosaurs. Oh, there's so much I want to see, um, but mainly dinosaurs. Um, I want to see. I want to see the ancient civilizations. I want to see Antarctica before it was covered with ice. Um, I want to see. There's so much giants, the Nephilim. You know, you know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm talking about, people. And so, yeah, there's there's a lot. There's a lot. Um, I've thought about this. Yeah, as you can tell. And the Cursativa, it doesn't matter. It doesn't, to me, it's the same. I mean, not really, because sometimes the Sativa will kick in, but at the end of the day, it puts me to sleep. And that's all I, that's all I need. That's all I need, so... Either you're, you're riding high on that sativa and then you crash or that indica puts you in a couch lock and then you crash. <laughs> so it's the same shit, honestly. When I go to dispensaries, it's like, they ask, I'm like, I don't care. I don't care. What's your spirit animal? A koala. Because I'm koalified. <laughs> um... No, I don't know. I never thought of that either. Honestly, no. <sighs> Definitely not. Not your typical lion or tiger. I'm. I'm one of these. No. I'm, no. I, I think I would just be like a quirky. Like, hey, what's up, guys? Kind of animal. Yeah, I think a koala. <laughs> if you can give you. you if you can give your younger self advice, what what would you tell them? Um, I wouldn't. I wouldn't um, be like, don't do this, don't do that, you know. Um, because without those experiences, I don't think you, you I'd be able to grow. But there are just some decisions where, yeah, it's like. Hey, like, think twice before you do that one. <laughs> you know, just kind of say, hey, in case this situation comes up in your life and you want to do this, like, really think about it hard. <laughs> and uh, and also, obviously, the financial stuff. Not so much like, oh, invest in this. But I, uh, fun fact, I did have, when I was younger, I did have the opportunity to purchase uh, Bitcoin at a really cheap price. And yeah, that's something I would tell myself, like, you know, I go to when I was 18, 19, be like, hey, Danny boy, in case there's something that call, uh, it's called Bitcoin, buy like a thousand dollars worth at the time, which probably each one was like a dollar. Yeah. Um, so yeah, there's that, and to just enjoy life, because I've stressed out too much in my past, and sometimes the simplicities of life is can be very joyful. They made a movie about you. Who would play your part? Um, Henry Cejudo would play my part because um, he, we look alike. And so while he's filming the movie about me, I'll go fight the fights for him. And it's a win-win situation. Um, he'd be, yeah. I'd be like, hey, Henry, you want to be me? He's like, yeah, dog. I'm like, I, dog. And we just signed a contract. I'm like, I. <laughs> Greatest fear. Uh, snakes. Snakes is one. Um, honestly, I, I wouldn't say dying. It depends on how I die. I don't want to, I, yeah, I don't want to die a painful death. Um, if it's going to be painful, like, let it be quick. 
Mm, but no, I'm not, not really scared of death anymore. Uh, that's just something you learn to accept as you get older, I think. And you just think like, whenever my time comes, my time comes and it is what it is. Um, yeah, there's, there's, I don't know what else? Greatest fear. Yeah. Don't want to get in a rabbit hole with that one. What's the best advice anyone has ever told you to keep being myself? Um, I actually had someone tell me that recently <laughs> at my job. Um, and so that's what I mean. Like I could be personable and all that. So just keep being myself. If, if I'm providing value to people and why change that, you know, why? Uh, so, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm here. I, I want to serve people in many ways, whether that's giving good service and what I do, <laughs> or that is um, mentoring you, sitting down with you, even just listening if you're going through a hard time. Like, yeah, it's like, I'm here for you, dog. <laughs> or I'm, I'm here for you. It's all right. But yeah, damn, that's, uh, those are the, fit, the 50 questions. Um, you know, too bad we didn't have 50 Cent and Nate Dog singing a song about them. Um, but yeah, that's that's about me. Uh, just a little a quick glimpse. Not really quick, but that's it. That's, uh, yeah, that's Albra for you. So thanks for listening in, guys. I hope you, yeah, if you ever need anything, though, like I said, I'm here for you, Ollie, also. Feel free to reach out to me. That's my, uh, right there. That's, you can reach me right there on Instagram. And I'm, I'm here for any any of you that reach out. All right, guys. Big kahuna. <laughs>